My name is Rhonda Wattis. I'm from the Choctaw Tribe of Antlers, Oklahoma. I've been in Albuquerque now for uh, going on 15 years. I lived out in Bernalillo for a little while, and then I moved, bought a house in the Albuquerque area. And I was going to the, uh, to the gas station one morning to get me some coffee, and I saw this sign on the fence close to my home, and it said, All Nations Indian Baptist Church. And, you know, where I live, there's not a whole lot of natives in the area, so I was kind of skeptical of what the, sign, what the banner was on the sign at the schoolhouse. And I thought, hmm, I need to check them out someday because I want to see what kind of natives are out here. So the following Sunday, again, I was going to the gas station to get my coffee, and I saw the same banner. And it, I got a little more curious about it and wanted to, to check the place out. And my granddaughter had been coming home telling me all these Bible stories, and I knew, you know, she wasn't going to church, so and she was only six at the time. So I asked her, why are you hearing all these stories? And she said, oh, my friends at school tell me these stories, and they go to church, and I want to know when we're going to church. Where we live at, there's a garage sale. Every, every year we have a community garage sale in the park. And so my daughter and I went over there, and while we were there, this man, he came up, introduced himself, and I found out that he went to Haskell Indian School, and he was my brother's roommate. So we got to talking, and then I found out he was the pastor <laughs> of the church that was there in my community that I had been thinking about going to. So that made me even more interested about going to the church there. So I took my family with me, and we visited a couple of times, and we kind of liked it, but, you know, we weren't the the kind of people that just always were in church. I mean, I, was, I grew up in church, but after I got older, I just kind of, you know, didn't want to go anymore. But we went, and they really made us feel at home, and in, we enjoyed it. And so we got to where we went back again, and then we just became regular after that. I came here, and we, we were having uh, church on Wednesday night in Merritt Young Deer's home. And uh, he asked me, he said, Rhonda, if you were to die today, where would you go? And it's one of those questions, you know, I thought I knew, but when he asked me, I had to think about it. And he said, by the fact that I had to think about it, he knew right then that I probably needed to be saved. So I rededicated my life in his home. Ever since that time, you know, I I always thought, you know, if you accept God into your life, everything's perfect. You know, you don't have any problems anymore. You know, God just takes care of everything and, and you have nothing else to worry about, you know. But I still had problems, you know. There was days that I had, finan I mean, times I had financial problems. And I'm like, this is not supposed to happen. And there was things at work going on, people I didn't, that, I didn't know and didn't know me, but they didn't want to know me, and I didn't understand that because I always thought, you know, I'm a nice person. So coming to church uh, on Sunday and Wednesday at, at this church, All Nations, we go through the Bible a lot. So one verse that came to me uh, when we were studying on Wednesday night was Ephesians uh, 6.10. And it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having to put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all, all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that really said a lot to me because, you know, it's putting on your armor. You know, when you get ready for battle, you have to put on your helmet, you put on your breastplate, you, you get your weapon and, and your special shoes for, for war. And when I read that, 
that's basically what I do every morning when I get up. You know, the world is not perfect. There, there's so much sin in the world, and the world's not perfect. And when I get up, I may be in a good spirit, and I may be feeling God, but once I get out in the world, it just seems like it all crashes down. So I know that when I get up, I have to prepare myself for the world and put on my breastplate and my helmet and my shoes and my, take my weapon with me and, and get out there and face the world. So this scripture meant a whole lot to me. Uh, growing up in, in the boarding schools, we always went to church, but it, even though I knew a lot of these verses, they never really touched my heart the way it has in the last few years. So, like I say, with, with knowing the Lord and, and being able to bring my grandchildren with me, that, that's the best thing that you know, I can see in my life. It's so wonderful now to have this church to come to so that they can learn about God and, and that you know, they can accept God in their life at an earlier age and know more about Him. Because I didn't. I, I learned about Him at an older age and, and I wished I had known, you know, everything that I know now, I wish I had known when I was younger. And so that's what I give to my grandchildren.